In this video, we're going to look at the isothermal compressibility and the thermal expansion coefficient. These are two properties that are related to the compressibility of a gas sample. And I want you to kind of think about why that would be important for a gas and less so important for a liquid or a solid, right? Gases are really compressible. And by that, I mean if you change their volume, their properties respond in a, in a very dramatic way, in a way that liquids and solids don't, right? If you compress a gas, um, as, as in you constrict its volume, lower its volume, then there's going to be a dramatic change in pressure uh, when compared to the expanded volume, right? Um, and that really is a, a inherent property of gases. So we have two properties that we define uh, that can help, help to uh, quantify the compressibility of a gas. And these are the thermal expansion coefficient and the isothermal compressibility. So first, let's start with the isothermal compressibility. We use the Greek letter kappa to denote the isothermal compressibility. And my kappa is just a little curly K, right? Um, its definition is going to be negative 1 over V, partial derivative of V with respect to P at constant T. Right, so think about the definition of this and what it means, right? This means uh, the fractional change in volume that accompanies uh, a change in pressure, right? Um, and kind of think about why this negative sign is here as well, right? That negative sign is there because if you raise the pressure, right, you're actually going to have a drop in volume, right? They're inversely proportional, remember? So, um, so that's why that negative sign is there so that if there is an increase in pressure, is going to offset that negative change in volume to still give you a positive um, isothermal compressibility. So this is our isothermal compressibility. And the other um, useful property is the thermal expansion coefficient, which we use the Greek letter alpha for the thermal expansion coefficient. And that one's going to be 1 over V times a partial derivative of V with respect to T at constant P. This is our thermal expansion. Now, for this property, right, um, we don't necessarily need that negative sign because as the temperature rises, the volume rises, right? They're directly proportional. So uh, we don't need to have that negative sign to offshoot a raise in, in the property, right? Okay, so one thing I want you to notice about both of these formulas is this one over V term that's in front of these derivatives, right? So all the stuff that I've talked about for the definition of these two quantities, the fractional change in volume with respect to temperature and pressure respectively, um, that's all locked up in the derivative, right? This 1 over V term that exists in both of these, this is so that these are intensive properties, right? Keep in mind, remember, intensive properties are properties that don't change with the system size. Uh, so think about like density, right? Density is an intensive property of mass. So you have density as mass over volume. Same thing here. We're dividing by the volume to create an intensive property uh, for these fractional changes in volume. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, take these definitions and use the ideal gas law, right? So uh, keeping in mind our ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. What I want to do is calculate the thermal expansion coefficient and the isothermal compressibility for an ideal gas, right? So let's first do it for the thermal expansion coefficient. So first we're going to calculate alpha for ideal gas right so uh, we we have the definition of alpha up here so we know that uh, first we're gonna need an expression for the volume so we know the volume of an ideal gas is gonna be nRT over P just doing the algebra to get the expression for volume right now we need to take the necessary derivative right so the derivative that we have to take here is the derivative of volume with respect to temperature so let's do that so we're going to do dv dt at constant p. And so that derivative is just nr over p, right? So now that we have that derivative, we can plug that back into the expression for alpha to get the thermal expansion coefficient. So we have alpha 
is equal to 1 over V and R over P. Now, technically, this answer is correct. However, um, what we usually do is to substitute in the volume expression uh, because it's kind of useless to express a fractional change in volume in terms of volume, right? This is like trying to use a, a word to define a word. Like if somebody asks you what physical chemistry is and you just said, well, it's physical chemistry. It's not really telling them anything, right? So same deal here, right? We want to express this fractional change in volume with respect to, you know, stuff that's not volume. So what we're just going to do is plug in the inverse of the ideal gas volume here, right? So all we'll do is have uh, P over NRT times NR over P, right? So all I did was just plug in the inverse. So if you just basically invert this guy, that's one over V. All I did was just plug that in there. Now we see some things that will cancel. So we got NR cancels there, pressure cancels, right? So the only thing we're really left with here is going to be alpha is equal to one over T, right? So our fractional change in volume is just equal to the inverse in temperature for the case of an ideal gas. All right, now let's do the isothermal compressibility. So for our kappa, Right. Again, we're also going to need the volume expression. I'll just write it again here for completeness sake. But we know we have to take another derivative with respect to volume. Here it's different, though. We have to take the derivative of volume with respect to pressure. So if we do that, dV dP at constant T. Right. So if we're taking the derivative here, right, this will be the same as taking the derivative of one over X. Right. Since we're taking the derivative with respect to pressure. So that's going to be negative NRT over P squared. Right. So now that we have this expression, we can again plug it back into our expression for isothermal compressibility. Right. So plugging this into our expression for kappa. We have now since there's a negative out front here, right, these two negatives will cancel. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel those guys out. And then you're just left with one over V and RT over P squared. OK, again, same deal. This is a fractional change in volume. We don't want volume in that uh, final answer here. So we will uh, do the same thing we did here. So just plug in the inverse of volume, which is just going to be P over NRT. NRT over P squared. OK, so now we just look at what algebra we're left with. So I'm about to use a different color for canceling. So NRT cancels out, right? That's gone. And one of these pressures in the numerator here cancels out with one of the pressures in the denominator there, right? So then we're left with just one over P, right? So kappa is going to be equal to one over P. All right, cool. So um, so we get this uh, these expressions for alpha and kappa for an ideal gas, and they're both just um, equal to the inverse of pressure and temperature, respectively, for an ideal gas. So uh, but keep in mind, these uh, properties are more general than just an ideal gas. If you have any uh, state equation that gives you the volume, then you can get its compressibility. And depending on the state equation, certain gases will be more compressible than others. And that's actually something we can quantify by calculating uh, these properties.